All right, we are live. Wow, that was a little sticky today. <laughs> Looks like there's a new process in this recording experience as usual. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing wonderful. So, hello, it's been a week, right? I know so many of you are used to me going on here and um, being able to see me every day and being able to um, ask me questions every day. And some of you are like, where are you? And I'm coming on here now, Wednesday, every day, every Wednesday, every week, um, instead of every day, because things are just getting really busy now. And so um, that way you can get all of your questions to me and I can compile them and I can answer them. And then I can find different posts and things that match them. So it just brings you into the group. So today, what we're talking about is this beautiful post that a client shared with me that really fit um, the work that we've done. And it really fit what I'm about in teaching my clients. And she's like, I knew you were going to love this. And so I shared it with you guys. And so many of you loved it as well. And so you'll see this really cute post. Take a look at it. You'll see that it recommends that you put yourself first, that you manifest your dreams, that you're not too old and it's never too late, right? Um, that you get to start again. Every day is a brand new day. Also, um, you get to be open to new ideas and allow your mind to really be on that mindset and, and changing things and being aware of things and allowing your mind to open up so you can be outside of the box. And then the other is to allow yourself to be able to change your mind and create forgiveness with yourself. So essential, like totally essential. Without that, uh, we're stuck in guilt and shame and all these different things. And, ugh, who deserves that? Nobody deserves that. We deserve to learn from those things and change from those things so we can be better people and the world could be a better place. Um, and then lastly, I don't usually cuss all that often, especially with clients or especially live. But sometimes when you hear a cuss word, it's sort of like, Goo. so this one, let that shit go. Ah, right. <laughs> But seriously, it's so important that we take a look at the things that we're struggling with and realize, oh my gosh, if this is coming from my negative thinking and I'm creating this, I can also let it go. And so it's, it's just so important. So take a look at those things. Look at that infographic and see what applies to you. And why, why, why is that important? Why do I even do this? Why am I on here each week for you? Well, I just want to share with you, and I'm always transparent about my story because it is what has gotten me to where I am. And I share this with you almost every time I come on here live because I don't want you to think that you're in this alone. I want you to know that other people are in this struggle with you. And I want you to know from my story and my situation, it is possible to make that change. And so many of you have gone through this as well. Those of you who have worked with me as clients, those who are great friends with me, um, the people that I run into, you guys have beautiful stories. You are beautiful human beings and you get to live into that. So much of the time we're living into pain, we're living into guilt, we're living into suffering, we're living into conflict issues in our relationship where we're, we're being so busy that we're not taking care of ourselves or we're not following up or we're not setting boundaries or something is holding us back. Something has us stuck, even though we might know what the problem is and even though we might know where we want to go, that problem keeps showing up, showing up, showing up and stopping us in our tracks. Sometimes it's creating, you know, analyzing too much, that analysis paralysis. Sometimes it's creating that oh, just I, I see everybody else is getting there. How do I get there? Or it's creating that, oh, my gosh, I don't have enough time. I just I can't do this and I can't do that. And I can't go here and I can't go there. And, you know, all of the not good enough and I can't do it and all that that self-doubt. Um, sometimes it's showing up in choices that we make. Like it might sound like, oh, I choose the same relationship. It looks like the same problems, you know, or either it's one extreme or the other extreme, or it might be showing up in your parent-child relationships, whether it's with your parent or with your child. Maybe it's showing up with your coworker or with your boss. 
So there's all these different things that could be showing up, creating these different dynamics and different problems. And it's just like, <laughs> you just feel like it's got a chokehold on you, a chokehold on your life, a chokehold on your dreams. And I had that. Oh my gosh, did I have that? I had that for decades, right? I might not look it, but I'm 44 now. I had it from the time I was a child. I remember it at four years old, panicking, having to go home. Like I could feel the nerves beginning to pick up and my breathing beginning to get tighter and the pressure in my head and the tears behind my eyes as I took each step closer to being home. And as I, I share that with you, I can connect with it now and have to remind myself to breathe and remembering that I'm not that person anymore. I was able to shift past that and grow past that and I'm safe now. But there's oftentimes those that I'm working with and maybe this rings true for you. When you connect to those memories, they feel like you're living them right now. Or when you have situations happen now, you might not understand why there's this extreme anxiety or extreme panic or extreme <gasps> or grrr. But when you have an emotion or a thought that resonates, that's similar to other times, it can trigger those thoughts and trigger those emotions. And not like we use trigger, I think, too much now, but it, it pushes a memory button. It doesn't mean you're in some kind of breakdown or there's something wrong with you. It's supposed to hit those buttons because they're similar and familiar. Just like if you pluck a guitar string, it's going to resonate with another stringed instrument or anything else it can vibrate. It'll vibrate water because water can, a liquid can, can, it can flow through liquid, right? So you'll be able to see that things that are similar will resonate. So you might not even think it has any connection to past situations in life, but it happens. Our memories, our brain is that way. It ties things that are associated. It's just normal. So we use the word trigger and, and we, we've used it so much in that it's this scary thing. So instead of using that word, you can use the word, I remember. It, it connects to another memory. It connects to a similar emotion. So when we take all the stress and all the strain out of our thinking and realize, whoa, I had some limiting thinking on that. I had some incorrect belief on that. I had some scary made up stuff about that. Oh, okay. I can feel better about that. I can relax about that. So share with me how that helps. Share with me as you're thinking those things, how it creates a new awareness, a new understanding. And then take a look at the post. We're going to look at this together because I want you to have this to continue to go back to. And I did also a meditation last week that I'd also like you to go back to. I continue to leave these tips and tools on here for you so you can practice them and use them. And I continue to remind you, I am available. I do this work because I needed it and, and I didn't have it. I have done therapy all of my life, but I didn't know how to retrain my thinking. I didn't know how I was programming this stuff. No matter who told me stuff, if I didn't realize that I was the programmer to this software, it wasn't going to change, right? I know what programs are on my computer, but I don't know how to change the programming. I don't know how to change the software. I need someone to show me how. And so if I don't know how, that's it. I just get angry. I just get mad. I slam my computer. Well, I want to, I think about it all the time. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, I want to beat the keys. I want to take a hammer to it. Like that's, that's this exotic dream that I have, <laughs> right? I fantasize about being able to smash my laptop. <laughs> I was talking about it with my husband the other day. <laughs> I was like, do you want to get a hammer and we could smash it and I'm going to get the camera and I'm going to record it. And we're going to put it on slow motion so we can just really enjoy it. 
<laughs> I know it's totally silly, but it's so true, right? We have this, this thing and we don't know how to program it and the program's in there, or maybe it was programmed correctly, but now it's got a worm in it or a virus or whatever, a flu or the computer's got COVID, right? And, and we don't know how to make it better. Well, what I have learned is unintentionally, we picked up little viruses in our programming. Because guess what? When you were little, did you care about things and call things negative and bad? No, everything was wonderful. You're like, oh, this is wonderful. The computer's wonderful. The, my feet are wonderful. Look, I've got fingers. Everything's wonderful. Look, there's humans and moms and dads and everything's wonderful. And it wasn't until we started learning from the adults how to think and how to be negative and how to make up stories about ourselves or each other. Like, oh, I'm not as good as, right? I'm not as good as this person or I'm not as good as that person. Or, um, you know, um, I don't get affection or love unless I'm doing it right. So now there's a new story of I've got to get it right all the time. Or, you know, I, I'm only loved and accepted when I get 20 million things done, but I'm not loved and accepted if I just get one thing done. I'm only loved and accepted when I work really hard and sacrifice everything and sacrifice my life and give myself, you know, ahead of everybody else and never have time for myself, then I'm appreciated. So what are we going to learn as little kids? Little kids are sponges. They're going to learn the right thing. And the right thing is you're going to do what you're supposed to do and you get love. That's not correct, though. And so we've learned incorrect programming. Or maybe it's even worse. Maybe no matter what you did, you didn't get love or acceptance. So you pushed and 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 pushed. And your learning was, I don't ever get to stop pushing. Or maybe you were a different personality that said, bump this. I know I'm going to fail. I know I'm not going to be accepted. So I give up. I'm not doing nothing. Whatever. I don't know. I'm not giving my best. If I give my best, I got to give more. So I'll give this much. Whatever. I'm busy. I've got, mm -mm. No, I'm, you know what? I'm tired. This work is too hard. Everything is too hard. This is all too hard. It's just too hard. And then you might find that your personality that just finds you give up so quickly. It's not your fault. I know these things hurt, but it's not your fault. And there's so many ways to help that hurt go away. And not like go away, like ignore it and shove it down and fester, 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 rot, 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 right? <laughs> like Meg Ryan said. It's actually allow it to go, oh, here's this pain, right? Like you've got a splinter. Oh, there's the splinter. Shoot. I can't see it. It's so, so can you get that out? Can you see that? And so someone else like myself, which is why I'm here, I know how to find the splinter. I know how to get it out without much pain, if, if any, or to be able to help you know how to deal with the pain. Like, hey, this is going to hurt a little bit right there, um, but it's really not, it's just going to be more discomfort. Or I'm going to show you how to take the needle because when you put a needle in there, it's going to hurt much less because you're not expecting or reacting to me doing it and going, oh, it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt. Nope, you're going to do it. Oh, yeah, it doesn't hurt as much. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you break through the negative thinking, break through that programming that you don't know how to yet. Just means you haven't learned it yet. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Doesn't mean you're broken. Doesn't mean you're bad. Doesn't mean you're stupid. Doesn't mean you're not good enough. It doesn't mean any of those painful beliefs that you have going on. Oh, they're so painful. I can feel them when I think about you thinking about them because I did too. Oh, let's shake that off. Oh, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. You don't need to have that on you. And I can show you ways with practical examples, with role-playing, with exercising, with um, NLP, which is changing your thinking, neuro-linguistic programming, right? It's what you do already. So it's helping you to become aware of what you've been creating of your thinking, your programming, your neuralistic um, pathways, right? And change them. It's really not that hard once you know how. Now, just like riding a bike was hard, right? Just like 
learning how to speak was hard. Learning how to spell was hard. Learning how to write your name was hard. But you don't even remember. Or maybe you do, but it's like, oh, I remember. I hated it. <laughs> but I can write my name really great now. And you know what? Nobody cares if I write between those lines. Then it's absolutely perfect. And it touches everything. And <laughs> oh, I could never stay on the lines. And I still don't, I'm a very, very messy writer. So my point in sharing all these things with you is to be able to see that you are perfectly you and we can help you to get more aware of how to be perfectly you without all of this baggage and all of this drama and all of this pain and all of this old stuff you don't deserve to be hanging on to. And you might even have beliefs that say, yeah, I deserve to hang on to that. I deserve that pain. I deserve that guilt. I deserve that shame. I deserve punishment. Well, those are things we get to work on too, because that means you have a belief that says you should be punished. And who teaches us that? The grownups. You did bad, you get to be punished. And for some, like with my mother, the punishment never ends. You will hear about it for 20, 30, 40 years later, and you will suffer. That's not your belief. That's not your truth. That's not even real, right? That's what they believed because that's what they were taught or how they were treated. Did they deserve that? No. Now, maybe they did terrible things and you're like, yeah, <laughs> but that's okay we'll work on that too because we don't need to carry around that hate or that that tears at us let people have their problems their problems belong to them their hostilities their actions their pain their suffering let them have theirs and you get to work on yours feel that feel that as you imagine that you've worked on it Feel that as you notice that relief and that release. That's how it's supposed to feel all the time. And you might say that's impossible. Well, I promise you it's not. Totally. Yeah. So let's practice a little bit of this together. So if you can take a look at the post, if not, I'll share it with you now. So put yourself first. Now, a lot of people hear that. And the belief that comes up for you is that's selfish. That's just rude. That's wrong. Well, what if you thought about it in a different light? And if you are thinking about that, that lets you know you have limiting beliefs on this statement. So think of the example of a child is about to run into the street. There's a car coming and the car's not going to stop. What happens if you're in the middle of the street? and the child is further away, what's gonna happen? You're both gonna be hit unless you have some super fast reflexes. But let's say the car is too close and no matter how super fast your reflexes are, you're not gonna make it because you're in the middle of the road too. It's not your fault, you're supposed to be able to cross. But they're not, they're not paying attention, they don't see you, they're looking down at their radio or their cell phone. If you're putting yourself first, you are looking both ways for yourself and your safety, then you're gonna make sure you're on the sidewalk. So if that child starts to walk out, get back over here. That person's not being safe, let me keep you safe. If you are looking out for you, you're in a safe space, you're in a healthy space, you're in a solid grounded space, so you can help that other person easily. What's another example? What if you're somebody who your, um, your family is not really that healthy, um, they're kind of sick, they're kind of overweight, they're just eating whatever, and you've seen that, and you really want to make that change, you really want to exercise, you really want the family to eat better, but it's just too much work, you can't get them to do it, and so you find you don't do it either, but what if you stepped up? What if you started taking care of your body? 
What if you started eating better, even if it meant you had to make something different for you and different for them, which really probably just means you have more vegetables for you and a little less of the meat for you. Or if everybody's having chicken, you take the skin off. Or, you know, if everybody has sausage, then you have some extra chicken that's made or some extra fish that's made. And maybe you have some stuff in the freezer so you could pull it out. Guess what they're going to be seeing? Guess what you're changing? You're planting new software and new programming for a way of life. And you're not calling it a diet that I'll get off. You're calling it, this is my diet. This is how I am eating for myself and for my life permanently. You are changing a new programming for them. That is putting yourself first. You're going for a walk, even if they don't come with you every time, even if they don't come with you ever. Because guess what? Eventually, they're going to be like, hey, you know what? I could go take a walk too. Or you could say something like, you know what? I've really missed you. I'd love to spend some time with you. I'm going to go for a walk. It's just going to be 10 minutes. Can you come with me? Let's walk backwards. It'll be more fun. Let's walk sideways, right? Crossing, right? Cross, cross. <laughs> I can't Whatever, you got the idea. So that way it makes it more fun and interesting. So putting yourself first allows you then to bring others with you. What about with your finances? What about... Oh, I, I have to take care of everybody. I can't save. Or, um, you know, um, I, 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 I just want to have enough money to take care of myself. I don't want a lot of money. That's just, I don't want to take from other people. What about if your income is doing so well that you're solid and you can then overflow into others' lives? What about that? What about if your income is solid? So then you're not just giving to people, but you're saying, you know what? I want to invest into you, but I want it to have a return on investment into your life. So what if I invest in a class for you to take so you can learn how to do computers? So now you can keep doing that and you can get a better job. Or I want to invest in your business and I want to help you buy a piece of equipment, that, like a computer or something, that's going to help you keep moving forward. So you're putting into you, so you then can overflow and put into them. You're also putting into you boundaries. I'm going to set a boundary that I'm investing into something that helps you, not just giving you money, right? So you are putting you first in all of those things. Let me know what you think. Let me know how this is helping you. Let me know um, what questions this brings up, because I can even address them here today, here and now with you. But even as you're watching the replay, just tap on, uh, you know, comment replay and whatever questions you have. Share this with others so that way they can see this is possible for them too. It's, it's, this is not information that people automatically know. Okay. All right. So um, manifest your dreams. We hear that all the time, but what exactly does it mean? It sounds great, but what does it mean? means exactly what I'm talking about right now. If you're taking care of you, your health is getting better. You're eating better. You're drinking water, taking care of your body. And guess what? People don't think water is important. When I do hypnosis, I do it for a lot of different things. I do it for quitting smoking. I do it for helping people in conflict. I do it for releasing anxiety. But I also do it for different habits, like not wanting to drink water. And one of the things that we take a look at is what's going on? Are you Are getting a lot of headaches? Do you feel like you have a fog? Does your body feel really sore all the time? Do you get pulls and strains in your body often? How much water are you drinking? Are you thirsty all the time? Talking about it is making me thirsty. <laughs> The reason I ask those questions is because those are symptoms of not having water. And you might be like, what? No way. Yahweh. I like that too, Yahweh. That's, that's one of God's names, Yahweh. Anyways, so when you're drinking water, it's making everything in your body squishy and wet. 
right? Your brain, think of your brain like a sponge. What's a sponge like when there's no water? Can't do anything, can't wash the dishes. But when you allow yourself to wet that sponge, it's squishy and malleable. So is your brain, right? And this might sound kind of funny, but if you ever um, think about when they do um, work with shock, right? Like shocking um, the, the death sentence, they use a wet sponge because it helps electricity flow. Your brain needs that sponge, right? Needs that wetness, that sponginess. Because guess what? Your synapses, your, your thoughts, your program that's running flows through and it flows best when it's moist and wet. So keeping your body moist and wet will help your brain stay out of fog. It will help your muscles stay squishy and malleable instead of tight and like, oh, I feel so crampy. Why? Your joints will stay more squishy and wet. The more you are dry, the more you'll notice your skin is dry. You go to do this and it sort of stays. Instead of snapping back, it just sort of kind of hangs there and goes back real slow. Right? That's another way. You'll, you'll be more wrinkly, right? Water helps you stay juicy. <laughs> Keep it juicy, baby. So these things actually help you manifest your dreams as you're thinking better, you're feeling better, you're more squishy. <laughs> so allow yourself to realize the way that you're taking care of yourself, the way that you're allowing yourself to think and be open, being that person that makes the changes in your life, being open-minded in your life, asking for help in your life, that's allowing you to manifest your dreams. And guess what? And I can promise you this, when you are continuing to practice your dreams, others are watching and they're able to see what's possible. And you might find that we call them haters, but you might find that there's people who are jealous and you know what? It's because they believe it's not possible for them. That's the reason why they're hurting themselves with their thoughts. They look at where you're at and they're like, oh God, how can they get there? How is it they can get there and I can't? Because they have a belief that they can't. They have a belief that somehow you have some magic that they don't have. And really all it is, is you're putting in the hard work. You're manifesting your dreams. You're creating. God made you to be a creator. You are creating your dreams. And if you're not, and if things are in the way, I am here to help you. I, you can use my years of experience. You can use my years of pain. You can use my years of tools and learn them all quickly. So you don't have to go through four to 44, right? You can learn it in, in a short amount of time. Be like, whoa. Instead of going through this valley of pain and years and years and years of looking back going, oh, I wish you can have this jumping off like a trampoline, jumping over all of it and be like, whoa, this is so cool. And I've had so many clients say to me, I've had years and years and years and years of work and development and I never knew this. I wish I knew it then. So you can be one of the ones who say, I'm so glad that I connected with you. I don't have to wish that time. So let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how this is making an impact on you. Let me know if it's bringing up stuff for you, even if you feel cynical, like whatever, this blah, 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 blah. Let me know what's your cynical thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It just means something's coming up for you that has you feeling stuck. It has some limiting belief coming up that's not allowing you to be open-minded to it. It's okay. I've been there. Shoot. I was there just a couple days ago when somebody was offering a suggestion. And initially I was like, no. Okay, wait a second. You're telling me to think outside the box. That is outside the box. I don't know that I'll try that exactly. But this is opening up my mind to some new ideas. Huh. Okay. And I'll tell you, it made me feel a little sick. Whenever I'm opening up my mind past where I was before, I literally feel a little nauseous. It's odd, I know. Um, other people don't get that, but I, I've had it. I, I started doing this kind of learning since I was 17. And it just, it's like, 
I literally feel sick. <laughs> it's so weird when I'm forcing my mind unintentionally, right? It's just forcing the boundaries. And, and, and I, I can't explain why it makes me sick per se, like the science behind it. But I think it's because all of a sudden my mind is being pushed outside of its comfort zone. And because your mind is created to be safe, there's a part of my mind that's going, this isn't safe, this isn't safe, this isn't safe. But that part now, because I've trained it, is so quiet. All I'm able to get now is, whoa, this is really outside the box. I've got it. But that part of me that was believing it wasn't safe is the part that's feeling a little sick, you know, in and, and my throat and my stomach. And so it's okay, right? Feeling sick doesn't mean anything. I know I'm not sick. I know it's a... And so you can take all that I've been learning. And, and honestly, I've come to realize that um, this stuff started for me before I was four. Um, I didn't know it. But when you have a mom who is depressed and upset and stressed her whole life. It doesn't stop in the nine months you're in her um, when she doesn't take care of her health and she doesn't know how to do those things. And she's basically just a miserable person. Um, and again, no blame. It was her life. That chemical and that experience goes into the baby. It just does, right? That constant feeling of sad, that constant feeling of dread, that constant feeling of not good enough, that constant feeling of unloved, that constant feeling of worry, that constant, basically, um, she whenever she was stressed, she'd either bite, you know, her face or she'd rock, you know, different things. That was her comfort. And um, that was the mother I was born into. So guaranteed that was the mother that she always was. And I came to know that as an adult. So I can guarantee you that it happened before I was four. That's just my first recognition. So you'll actually get the learning that I have gotten since conception. <laughs> because I had to unlearn all of that that was trained into me through all of my development. And so if I can do that, so can you are a creator. You can manifest your dreams. Things do not have to be in your way, which goes right to you are not too old and it's never too late. And you could replace that for those of you who say the thing of I'm too young. Nobody listens to me. I'm too fill in the blank. I'm too short. I'm too ugly. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too much of a guy. I'm too much of a girl. I'm, I don't have enough boobs. I don't have enough pecs. Whatever it is that you put there to say that you are not enough, you could put that right there on that page. That is not true. <laughs> but you have programming set up in your mind and in your experience that is proof that it's true. And so the only way to shift that truth is to clean out the program. Think about your computer. Now, the idea of this kind of puts me into a panic. <laughs> because <laughs> I have all this software and all this programming on my computer that I use, but there's stuff on my computer that's screwing it up. There's stuff on my computer that's slowing it down. There's stuff on my computer that is making it shut down sometimes and not work properly. So I'm actually looking at having to do this in real life. I'm not just making up this story. I'm looking at having to go wipe it all clean and only put in the proper software that works. That is what you and I will do together. Now, you might go, how do you do that? That can't be done. That's impossible. When you know what the programming is in your computer, you could go in and delete it. But that's not really what you want to do. That's not your specialty. So you get a person who knows how to find the programming and delete it. That is what I know how to do. I know how to help you find the programming, and we delete it together. 
The difference with the computer and the computer person is they usually do it on their own. Now I'm looking for a computer person who can do it with me so I can take a look at what programming they're deleting because I've had people in the past delete the wrong programming. And then I couldn't find it again. And I couldn't remember what it was until I finally remembered what it was and was able to get it back on there. And it pissed me off. So what I do is I do it with you because your computer is your brain and you're never not with it. <laughs> so we get to do it together. So you're well aware of everything that I'm doing. And even when we do the hypnosis work, I hope you'd understand what hypnosis means. Even right now, we're doing hypnosis work, by the way which means you're taking information, you're allowing it to be programmed in without any real awareness. That's what hypnosis is. It's programming ourselves automatically without paying any attention. We've done it our whole lives, but no one ever taught us. Instead, we're told, oh, that's bad. Hypnosis is bad, it's mind control. Who do you think controls your mind? Who do you think sets up your programming? You do, but you haven't been taught how you do it. You haven't been taught that the programming you have is even yours. Here's an interesting programming. Who gave you your name? You probably never even thought about this one. Your parents did. Who said that's your name? Your parents did. But you agreed to it. You didn't even think about the fact that you agreed to it. You just said, my name is, and you filled in the blank. Most people don't think about the fact that they didn't choose their own name. The number one thing that you identify to the most is your name and you didn't pick it. <laughs> but you decided it was yours because somebody else said so and you went along with that programming. Now, we don't think about it like that. We think, no, it's just my name. That's just the way it is. But it's a program, a program that says this is your name. So uh, I'll pick Cassidy because I see Cassidy uh, click the, the like button. So let's say Cassidy's born. And oh, it's Cassidy. Oh, look, she's just so cute, this beautiful Cassidy. And so we don't even think about the fact that we're, we, wait, I didn't pick that. Uh, how, who says that's me? We just go, yeah, I'm Cassidy. Yeah, I'm, I'm beautiful and I'm wonderful. And I'm Cassidy and I'm Cassidy. Because you say I'm Cassidy. Who says you're Cassidy? I say I'm Cassidy. But you didn't realize initially, you didn't say you were Cassidy. And Maria, Maria hit the like button. Maria, Maria, you're Maria because somebody said so. I'm Tammy because somebody said so. But we don't even think about that. We just automatically accept that programming. How cool is that? Now you might be going, that's right. And some of you actually have, because some of you have taken on the idea of, I don't like that programming. I want to change that programming. I want to change my name to something else. I want to change this programming to something else. Um, Ricky Lynn, she says, Oh, these are good points. I don't know why they're just popping up. Uh, Ricky Lynn says, um, there's a huge difference between selfishness and self-love. Thank you for putting those differences so openly and eloquently. You're so good at what you do. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, that's so important. She also says, I don't drink water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So you definitely got to drink water. Um, oh, it makes me feel... Okay, great. So um, I might need him. Okay, yeah. So sometimes when you're drinking water or you have a different habit going on, it may have you feel uncomfortable or feel a certain way. So for example, for me with drinking water, this is a, a very interesting story. You're going to be like, wait, what? Yeah. Most of our stories you'll find when you have your story, you're like, that doesn't make any sense. It's okay. We made up these stories oftentimes when we were little kids. Little kids don't have to make sense. They can make anything mean whatever they want, and that makes sense to them. <laughs> and so the programmings that we have, a lot of them aren't logical because they were made from a mind that's just like, anything works. So here's my water. It's full of lemon. When I was a kid, and I, I don't understand this, and my my... I guess I could ask my dad, but he is not a talker and he doesn't, he um, 
they didn't really think things through when I was a kid. They were like 18, 19, so they were kids too. I'm gonna drink some of this. <laughs> so I was never given a glass of water until mealtime. I don't know why, maybe they didn't drink water either. They didn't drink water now that I'm thinking about it. My mother drank soda all day long. She had this massive, oh, like, like a big gulp of soda every day, all day long. That was it. Filled with ice and filled with soda. Diet. <laughs> it wasn't diet at first. Initially, it was RC Cola. We were from Chicago. We were a little country. But um, yeah, RC, I don't know if it was just country, but it was Chicago. Um, so I was not allowed to drink soda. So I was never given a drink throughout the whole day, every day, my whole life. And in school, they don't offer you water. You just get your milk, you know, during your meals. So I didn't know any different. So whenever I was given water, it was with my meal. And I didn't know how to explain this as a little kid, but I had acid reflux. So drinking water with a meal, oh, let me not push any buttons for you guys as I react. <laughs> oh, it was just gross. And not just the reflux in the esophagus, but the reflux, right? So let me not go into full detail with it, but it, it would burn all the way back. And so I ended up hating water. And of course, my mother drinking soda, it felt like I was being punished. And since most of my life I was being punished, it just seemed like this was another one of mom's punishments. But in reality, that was one of her ways of trying to keep me from getting a lot of sugar. I was already hyperactive. I, I think I was just hyper as a kid and I wasn't allowed to do anything. So I was always in trouble. <laughs> so that said, I hated, hated water. I hated water. And as a kid, I decided I was never going to drink water. And I, 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 you can feel that in me. It was almost with a rage. It was like, ugh, water. Really, that's, and I, I had that experience into my teens, into my 20s, into my 30s, because I didn't learn about mindset and mind programming, literally through really retraining the programming myself until my late 30s. So I wasn't drinking water my whole flipping life. I was drinking milk. I was drinking soda, mostly. I didn't like tea. I don't, I don't really care for tea unless I water it down like a lot. And I, I drink a lot of, I put a lot of sugar in it. So I was really being very unhealthy for my body and I didn't know it. Fortunately, I guess my body pulled out the water that it needed to and I always overate. So it would pull that water out because by the way, if you feel hungry, I'm sorry, if you feel thirsty, you might eat. So I was always overeating because I was always thirsty. I didn't know that. Now I do. That's just a little tip into some of my weight loss support that I do. So then I found lemon water. For me, lemon water helps to cut any of the acids that's going on in my stomach. So it doesn't come back up the way it used to. I've also found digestive enzymes through um, my company that I work with. And these digestive enzymes taste so good. They're a liquid that you put them in your powder and you put them in, they taste yummy. And they bring the extra digestive enzymes to my digestive system. So I don't have that problem. So I can be safe to drink water. And now I drink water all the time. I can think better. I can feel better. I clean out my system better. Um, I don't get uh, bladder infections. I don't get, um, I can think like I don't get the headaches, all that stuff helps. And so I, I just wanted to share that with you because that was a belief that I had and I could only change it programming myself differently. And I, it actually, I, I didn't even think about needing to do it until I had a client come to me who needed support with it. And I um, took the training on what I needed to for it. And as I was guiding her and coaching her and supporting her, it did it for me. I became aware. I felt the same shift. And I began drinking water. So it was because of her that I began drinking water. Isn't that wonderful? 
Um, and I can't find her number. It makes me so sad because I wanted to tell her that story. She made that difference. And I want to make that difference for you. So let me know how I can make that difference. I know today I've given you a lot of supports and a lot of tips and a lot of tools. And so I want you to be able to practice these and implement these in your life. Um, and so just touching back on the post. So just touching on the last couple here, being able to change your mind, forgive yourself, which allows you to start again. It allows you to be open to new ideas and allows you to let that shit go. Yeah, baby, because you can, you can do it. Say with me right now, I can do it. I can let this stuff go. I know somebody who can help me. It's okay. I don't have to reprogram my computer. I know a computer person. I don't have to reprogram my mind and my thinking and my habits and my limiting beliefs. I know somebody who can do that. I know a mindset reset guru, my hypno coach, Tammy Starr, she can help me do this. She can help me change my life. She can help me get my goals in check. She can help me work on my health or work on my relationships or work on my career or my business. She can help me get my relationship back in place as I'm getting rid of these negative thoughts and these this anxiety and this stress and what I thought was frustration and depression was actually stuff I was programming myself with. And she can help me. Oh my gosh. So you're not stuck with this stuff, guys. I promise you that because I am living proof, right? I am special because I took my story, I took my mess, and I made it a message. And you are special in that regard as well. So you can do it too. Let me help you take any mess and make it your message. Make it your goal, your dream, your vision. Let me help you manifest it because you so can. You're amazing. I will see you next week. And in the meanwhile, let me know your questions. Let me know your concerns. Let me know your, um, your oh, that's not true. <laughs> let me know any of your cynical thoughts. I want to help. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you want to cuss me out. I've had people do that, by the way, because then I can take a look at where it's coming from. It's just what's coming up for you. It doesn't mean there's anything bad or wrong. It's okay. Let me know. We'll take a look at it. We'll approach it next week. And if you want to work with me directly, you can give me a call, right? Call the number right over here. Um, you can personal message me. You can find me on, on my website, sparkshope.life. Under services, you'll be able to see that I offer a program for you if you want to work with me. Um, uh, you'll be able to see that I also offer a meditation that you can get to practice on your own just for relaxation purposes. And with that meditation, I give you a free consult. Um, you can also just shoot me a text, this number over here, and we can set up some time for you and you can get a, a free consult that way, whatever works for you. Don't tell yourself you're going to wait. Don't tell yourself it's okay. I've got these tools now that she shared with me. I'll do it on my own. I felt that way too. And then I saved the money. And then I had somebody help me. I have created a program that works with you, works where you're at, works with your level, works with you individually to help you break through what's going on. I kind of have a template of ideas, but I take those and I personally match them to you. We create an action plan. We create everything that you need. You're not just gonna be practicing with me. You're gonna be practicing in your life and following up with me, letting me know how you're doing, letting me know what got in the way. And then we're gonna be working on that. So this is real life. This is permanent. This is not going anywhere. And you're going to see the results for the rest of your life. And I'm here for maintenance sessions. So as new things come up that might throw you into a whirlwind, you still have that support. So you never have to feel like you're alone. I have my coaches for those times when I'm like, what the heck? I am so in my head. 
I don't know why I am here, but something is being pushed, some button of mine. And then we break it down because I can't see it. It's so here. And they're able to see out here and help me break it down and help me see what I can't see until I can go, oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so reach out to me. Don't wait anymore. Don't let another two years, three years, five years go by. It's okay. You get to have support. Arm in arm, right? One little string by itself isn't all that strong, but you put it together and it just binds, right? I love the, the aspect about marriage where you're bound together and then you're bound together with God. Nothing can break that. So allow yourself to bind together and we'll make that happen. And just so you know, I always pray over us. So we're also bound. And you could pray over it too. Add an extra layer. <laughs> bring that connection. Bring that support. Bring that help into your life. Because you deserve it. Even if it's not me. You deserve it. Make it happen. Make it happen today. Don't keep waiting. I'll talk to you later. See you next Wednesday. 8.15 a.m. Eastern time. Ciao for now, guys. Please share this. People need to know this. They deserve it. Even if you think, I don't want to share it. It's weird. Then just share it and say, hey, I think this is weird, but you might like it. Keep it super simple, super at ease. And if this helped you, share your story with them and how it helped you. So it's about you and your story versus, hey, I think this can fix you, right? Don't do that. People are not broken. They don't need to be fixed. They just need support and guidance and tools that they might not have had yet. All right, bring it in. Ooh, big squishy hugs all the way. Mm, give yourself 10 of these every day. And then allow yourself to give them to others. We need this so much, even if it's not connected and touch. When you're sending this energy, I'm imagining that I'm giving you a hug. I'm imagining that I'm sending love into you with that hug. I'm imagining that I'm thinking over your life. You are worthy. You are valuable. You are deserving. You are an amazing creator in your life. You can do that same thing for others and you can do that same thing into your own life every day. Do it 10 times. Big squishy hug into your life. Say these words into your life every day. And you can do it even in a fun way. Yay! More fun. Do it with some bounce. <laughs> you take care of you. Ciao for now.